Hi guys, so I want to show you how Firefox, which is an application that measures data from sensors on your phone works, and in particular look at the gyroscope. Now there are other apps that do the same thing. I have no particular allegiance to Firefox, although it, I think it is pretty pretty easy to use. So I've got the gyroscope here, it's got the X, the Y, and the Z components. I'm going to hit record, and you can see it's busy recording. Now I'm going to do a flip this way, flip back, flip this way, flip back, and flip around this way, and flip back. And you'll notice we got a Z, an X, and then a Y change in angular velocity. So the gyroscope is measuring the rate of change of angular position, in other words angular velocity, in those three different directions. So I'll hit pause. And the whole goal of the project this week is to learn about the sensor that actually does that, the physics of how it works, and what the design criteria are to enable folks to make a sensor like that that's actually um, that, that works. So welcome back. So uh, I want to walk you through this document just a little bit. It, it's about the design of a MEMS gyroscope. Now MEMS, as you've probably already learned, stands for Micro Electrical Mechanical System. A gyroscope is simply a device that measures angular velocity, the rate at which something is rotating. And the goal of this project is for you guys to become familiar with the design of a MEMS gyroscope, the physics of how it works, and, uh, and to play around with how you can adjust the design parameters to achieve better uh, responsiveness or more sensitivity, that kind of thing. So uh, let's first look at a model of the MEMS gyroscope that I cooked up in GlowScript. It's basically a mass connected to four springs. There are two springs in the X direction, two springs in the Y direction, and the whole thing is mounted on a frame that can rotate. So you can adjust the um, angular velocity of the frame, this omega thing here, and you'll notice that the thing wiggles in a complicated way. One thing I want to point out is when omega goes to zero, the wiggling in the transverse direction stops. It only wiggles along this axis, which I'm going to call the x direction. Of course, it's only the x direction in the frame's point of view, so from the frame's frame of reference. Um, and you'll notice that the green displacement here is zero. That's the displacement of the mass in the y direction. Again, it's the transverse direction, the y direction in the frame of the block frame. Okay, as you turn up the angular velocity, you'll notice that the uh, the thing starts wiggling in that perpendicular transverse direction, and it's actually by measuring the amplitude of that displacement that the MEMS gyroscope is able to determine the angular velocity. So it it looks at uh, the way the thing sloshes around in the y direction in order to determine what's going on. So. Um, there are other things you can adjust. I'll point out that you can pause the simulation. That just stops everything by clicking the pause simulation button. And then you can go in and zoom in on the graph and do other things like that if you wish. Um, you can also let the simulation go but view in the rotating frame. Now what that, that keeps the simulation going, but it simply puts you in a frame of reference where you're rotating with the frame. So you'd see it, if you were standing on the frame looking down at the mass, this is what it would look like. Of course, you can change your point of view anytime you like using the right uh, click on the mouse and look at the motion from any point, from any perspective. I can also turn that off and see what it looks like when it's rotating um, from any point of view, from in 3D space anyway. Um, now I can also adjust the spring constants of the two springs. I can dis dis adjust the amplitude of the external force, the driving force that's making the thing slosh in the first place. And I can also change the angular frequency of that driving force, omega of the external force. So th all those things can be played with and you can look at the motion and the change in the motion here on the graph. That's basically the idea. I should also point out that this is a Python program and you can go in and look at the code for the Python program if you're interested and see exactly how it works. The equations of motion are here, the uh, equations or the functions that control the sliders and the text boxes are here and so on and then there that's the whole program that runs the motion. It's actually quite simple. 
So uh, it's all there for you to inspect if you're interested. And uh, that's really all I have for now.